presenting to you the dome stabilizer for dome osteotomy of tibia. In the recent past, we've seen a resurgence of osteotomies and joint preservation surgeries, especially for the knee. The medial opening wedge osteotomy with internal fixation being the most popular option. It has a number of advantages. It requires no fibular osteotomy. It's quite simple and straightforward a procedure, providing a stable fixation, allowing early mobilization and early weight bearing. It allows alteration of tibial slope and is applicable in osteopenic and diabetic patients as well. However, it does have a few drawbacks. One cannot alter the correction postoperatively. It may result in distalization of tibial tuberosity, therefore resulting in a patella infera. The patellofemoral joint is not addressed to. The upper limit of correction is up to 15 degrees. It does not allow any rotational corrections. The implants may cause a hindrance for any associated procedure or if any secondary procedure is required. There is a risk of delayed or non-unions. The gap may need to be filled by a grafting procedure. The surgery is not performed through a midline incision and larger corrections may result in limb lengthening. The dome osteotomy with dome stabilizer overcomes all these drawbacks of the medial opening wedge osteotomy fixed with an internal fixation device. Therefore, it would be best to have both these options available as each of them would have a different set of best suited indications. In my practice, therefore, I have both these at hand, either a medial opening wedge osteotomy fixed with a domofix or a dome osteotomy with a dome stabilizer, both of which together cover up most of the indications. Now, the selection of osteotomy would depend upon a number of factors. Firstly, the degree of correction. So, for cases having larger degrees of correction, more than 15 degrees, a dome osteotomy is preferred. Those patients having patellofemoral symptoms, again, a dome osteotomy to achieve the Mackay effect to decompress the patellofemoral joint. Those requiring rotational corrections, again, a dome osteotomy. However, the patient's compliance with an external fixator does need to be taken into consideration. Those patients which are osteopenic, diabetic, or with ligament deficiencies where we need to alter the tibial slope, a medial opening wedge osteotomy fixed with an internal fixation is preferred. The dome osteotomy itself has a number of advantages. It can be done through a small midline incision centering over the tibial tuberosity. It is in the metaphyseal bone stock area, therefore good chances of union. There is no limb length discrepancy because there is no removal or addition of any bone stock. There is no alteration of the posterior tibial slope. Rotational corrections, if necessary, can be performed in a dome osteotomy. Since there is no distalization of the tibial tuberosity and the patients are mobilized immediately postoperatively, there is least chance of any patella infra. Entromedialization of the tibial tuberosity is possible and therefore this gives the Mackay effect decompressing the patellofemoral joint and relieving the patient of their anterior knee pain. Higher degrees of correction are possible much more than 15 degrees in cases of dome osteotomy. Precise correction of angulation is possible as it allows even post-operative alterations in correction to achieve the precise correction. The osteotomy itself is inherently stable and therefore a simple uniplanar bilateral fixator is sufficient to stabilize the osteotomy. As the osteotomy retains the normal shape of upper end of tibia, nor is there any patella infera or any implants at the proximal end of tibia, it does not pose any challenges for a future arthroplasty if ever required. The osteotomy is inherently stable and that's because it is in the broad metaphyseal area of the upper end of tibia. It has a confining nature. The fixator compression and weight bearing also add to the stability. The soft tissues including the patella tendon anteriorly, the posteromedial ligamentous structures and the posterior muscular tendon structures also contribute to the stability. The mediolateral stability is achieved by the fixator and therefore a simple uniplanar bilateral fixator suffices for stabilization of the osteotomy.
a majority of the patients with medial compartmental osteoarthrosis would have a tibia vara and therefore the center of rotation of angulation of the deformity would coincide precisely with the axis of correction of angulation for the osteotomy this therefore does not lead to any secondary deformity or translational deformities following a dome osteotomy as we see over here so this is the dome stabilizer that i prefer to use for fixation of the dome osteotomy and as we can see here it is much unlike any of the other uniplanar bilateral fixators as it allows us to keep both the pins at an angle to each other the design and utility of the fixator has been published in the journal of knee surgery in 2007 it has an indian patent and a us patent pending each of the fixator clamps has got two blocks the sliding block and the swivel block which sits onto the sliding block the sliding block slides on the threaded rod and is independent of the swivel block the swivel block swivels on the sliding block and has got holes to accommodate different sizes of pins which can be fixed to it with a top nut however this does not lock the swiveling of the swivel clamp In order to make it a static frame and to lock the swivel clamp one needs to tighten the locking bolts on either sides this would lock the swiveling of the swivel clamp to give us a static frame as and when required this again does not affect the sliding mechanism of the fixator the fixator allows both the pins to be kept at an angle to each other not only in the coronal plane but also in the axial plane as we see here This gives us the versatility to allow correction both in the coronal as well as in the axial plane as well as to achieve precise degree of correction as much as necessary without being restricted with the pins being parallel to each other this also allows post operative alterations in correction if necessary The pins that are used with the fixator are modified denim pins the central portion is a self tapping threaded portion and the tip is modified to a drill bit tip to allow ease and precision in passing of the pin since it can be used on a drill rather than passing it with the help of a t handle which needs to be passed manually the dome stabilizer has a number of advantages it is quite compact and light therefore it's very patient friendly the simplicity in application and utility makes it a very surgeon friendly apparatus it allows the pins to be kept at an angle to each other both in the coronal as well as in the axial plane and therefore coronal as well as rotational corrections are possible post operatively if we need to alter the correction it can easily help us in altering the correction in the ward itself being compact and light it allows for full range of motion and it allows for full early weight bearing as well because it's compact the patients can wear their regular clothes and it has just two pins therefore just four pin tracks to be dressed so it's very patient compliant a procedure now coming to the procedure itself first a scanogram is performed so say that is the preoperative mechanical axis from the center of the hip to the center of the ankle that is the point where we plan to have our post operative mechanical axis going through that is the axis of correction of angulation for the dome osteotomy therefore that will be the degree of correction that will be required first a fibular osteotomy with excision of a centimeter of fibula is done either from the upper third middle third junction or the middle third lower third junction depending upon the degree of correction that is required the proximal pin is passed 5 mm below the subchondral bone parallel to the tibial plateau under fluoroscopic guidance the modified pins as we see over here can be passed using the drill itself and therefore they allow for easier smoother and more precise passage of the pins the distal pin is then passed at an angle of predetermined degree of correction to the proximal pin multiple drill holes are then made in an anteroposterior direction in a dome shaped fashion proximal to the tibial tuberosity using a 5 mm narrow osteotome the drill holes are then joined together to complete the osteotomy acute correction is then achieved on table by giving a valgusizing force to keep both the pins parallel to each other 
and by this we assume we've achieved the degree of correction that we've planned for. The dome stabilizer is then applied onto the pins with both the lateral and medial columns in a compression mode. As we see over here, the application of the lateral column itself of the dome stabilizer achieves good enough stability for the dome osteotomy. The medial column of the dome stabilizer is then applied. First, the pins are fitted onto the swivel block using the top nut. Once that is done, the fixator is then compressed on the medial side and the adjustment nuts on the threaded rod are then tightened to hold it in a compression mode. As we see here, the osteotomy has a continuous, excellent and broad contact surface area for good union. The fibula which has been harvested at the beginning of the procedure is split vertically into three and grafted at the site of truncation. And that is the final appearance of the osteotomy following the procedure. That's the extra picture immediate postoperatively. Now in the post-operative period, for some reason, if we've not achieved the degree of correction that we planned for, we can still alter the correction in the ward itself. For this, we first need to relieve the compression over the fixator clamps. The side requiring distraction is then distracted to disimpact the osteotomy at the same time alter the degree of correction. Once we've achieved the degree of correction that we planned for, we then compress on either sides simultaneously to dock the osteotomy back into position to achieve the final perfect desired degree of correction that we have planned for. Let's take for example this patient that was a preoperative scanogram. The immediate postoperative scanogram showed a valgus position of the knee with the mechanical axis going lateral to the lateral joint line. This was an over over correction despite having both the pins parallel to each other. Now, because of presence of this fixator, we could do a readjustment of the osteotomy in the ward itself. And as we can see here, one has achieved a precise degree of correction postoperatively following the fixator readjustment. And here we can see that the pins are at an angle to each other following the precise correction. As we can see here, these patients can be mobilized early following the surgery after removing the compression dressing, achieving good range of motion immediate postoperatively. We encourage these patients to start weight bearing as early as possible as they add to the stability and enhance union of the osteotomy. So by day three, usually they would be walking partial weight bearing with the help of walker and are encouraged to leave their walker at the earliest. On an average, most of the patients would leave their walkers by around two weeks postoperatively. That's the time they are coming for the suture removal. Here we can see a significant difference in this patient's gait. Almost three weeks postoperatively, she's quite comfortable going up and down the stairs as compared to her preoperative status. They're comfortable sitting cross-legged as the fixator is quite compact and allows for full knee bending. They can wear their regular clothes as the fixator is well hidden under the trousers. Now here's a case example, a 70 year old farmer by occupation he did not want to undergo a joint replacement at any cost and so he opted for a joint preservation procedure. We performed a dome osteotomy for him and as you can see over here, he is much more comfortable following the procedure. His level walking is improved to near normal. He can squat, he can sit cross-legged, he can walk normally and he could climb up and down stairs much more comfortably. He was back to all his normal routine daily activities and in fact he said he was back to his farming. Those were his x-rays preoperatively. 
X-rays immediate post-operatively and X-rays at the final follow-up. A couple of more patients over here treated by the same procedure, a dome osteotomy using a dome stabilizer. Some more case studies. At 10 to 12 weeks post-operatively, we do x-rays to confirm union of the osteotomy. If the x-ray shows good union, we relieve the compression over the clamps and the patient is asked to follow up after three days of normal activity. If he has no fresh complaints regarding pain or swelling, if there is no change in correction, then we assume that the osteotomy is fully united and we go ahead with removal of the fixator. The fixator is removed under short general anesthesia as a daycare procedure and this completes the entire treatment. Here's an example, an x-ray preoperatively, x-ray immediate postoperatively and x-ray at the final follow-up. My early results with this procedure have been published in the American Journal of Knee Surgery. They've shown excellent to good results as far as the knee society score and the knee function score are concerned. And these were maintained in their follow-up and the patients operated thereafter as well. It is advisable to use the fixator only as a single use. There have been no mechanical failures of the fixator so far. The fixator has been designed specifically for the dome osteotomy of the tibia. The design and utility of the fixator and the pins have been patented and all copyrights are reserved. Thank you all for your attention.